So I thought we'd first talk about who the hell is Habito? Uh, as, as you're here, you may be wondering. Uh, you may have seen our uh, aggressive uh, campaigns, and they are uh, related to uh, what, we, what we have seen that customers feel when they talk about mortgages. They like not to talk about mortgages, and they like to uh, not think about what tends to be an experience with quite a lot of uh, jargon and, and time wasting. Uh, so we're set up, we're set up to, to change that and make uh, a, a broker experience, but also lending products that are better for that. That's been going rather well. We've been open to, for customers since April 16. And um, um, since then, <coughs> we've done three and a half billion pounds of mortgages advice. We do all of our mortgages uh, advice. And we're for free uh, in brokerage. Um, customers like that. Uh, because we are open 24-7 um, uh, for, for questions and we have real humans at the end of a automated process uh, like those two gentlemen there. Uh, they're not 24-7 but uh, open till very... Uh, uh, we, we have brokers on hand every night, uh, including the weekend. We're now uh, 180 people in these, in these offices and um, the most important stat we all watch like a hawk is we get really good reviews from customers, which we think is the, is, is the key. Uh, and so far, it's 4.8 stars out of 5 on Trustpilot, and where we could have been accused of doctoring in the beginning. I'm sure we didn't. Um, but uh, with these kind of numbers, it's starting to get hard. So maybe customers like uh, some of it, which is great. Um, <clears throat> we are the only broker that's also a lender since July last year. Uh, we always wanted to do that. We've also started making our own products. Uh, in buy to let we were talking about tonight, uh, we're going to uh, launch residential uh, mortgages later as well. But particularly for, uh, not to copy what everyone else did, but saying there's a couple of segments where we're not, uh, where it's not done well. Um, <clears throat> last thing I'll say about that, and I'll talk about rates, is uh, what's unique about our mortgages is we're hoping everyone will copy and then we'll think of something else. Um, so we give clarity up front, we call it instant decision where a decision in principle, as you get from other lenders, tends to be a bit sketchy and based on average seven uh, questions. We use actually all of our criteria and we do an instant uh, check with a number of databases so we can get a, get a uh, uh, offer that we, can, uh, that we can stick with and you can get a offer in a, in a few seconds um, and therefore we can do uh, the full process to offer in about half the time as everyone else. Um, Talking about being underserved, we think there's a couple of elements, particularly in the buy to let market, uh, um, little criteria that are just a bit uh, weird. So there's many lenders excluding tenants on, uh, on benefits, which we don't see a rational uh, reason for. So we don't do that. Um, we're particularly good for self-employed. We only need one year of, of history. And uh, crucially, we have lower deposit and longer term. So um, we go up to 80% loan to value and we have uh, a lot of interest in our seven and 10 year mortgages. Um, <clears throat> the last, uh, we, yeah, we do individual company and portfolio buy to let. And uh, the thing we're particularly proud of is we've made our terms and conditions actually uh, uh, something you may want to read and if you did, you could actually understand them. And uh, Fair Finance and external uh, organizations thinks we're the, we're the only mortgage terms and conditions that uh, hit that mark of being understandable by people who have a mortgage. So we're pleased about that. Um, so products stand on their own, talk to a broker later. But let's talk about the, um, let's talk about the market. <coughs> so to talk about um, <coughs> mortgages, forgive me, because uh, there will be uh, very different groups in the, in the room. But um, so some of all of you may, may know this, but just um, why is it important to even look after, uh, talk about rates? Um, I think a, a mortgage, Having a mortgage is a, is a big part of maximizing your, uh, your return as an, uh, as an investor. So um, just taking it to a, a, a simple stylized example. If you had 100,000 pounds in cash and you put all of that into a property and buy, bought it outright uh, um, or took a mortgage, what would that look like? Now take it through the numbers. If, if there was 100,000 uh, pounds, you put it in there, uh, you bought that property that was 100,000, you, you wouldn't have a loan and you'd get a rent uh, that on average in the UK is somewhere between four and a half and five percent. So we took five percent for ease of calculation. So you get 5,000 pounds of rent in a, in a year and uh, there wouldn't be a mortgage uh, and you need to deduct uh, average cost of about 30% of rent uh, uh, to get to 
a net yield on the rent of 3,500 pounds on that uh, on that investment, and then so with my uh, block is in the way, the uh, house price will uh, typically agree. We've, we've used uh, an increase, so we've used two percent a year over five years. Um, <coughs> they get you to just over 10 percent, so 110. Uh, thousand pounds is the property. If you take uh, 110 minus 100,000, so 10,000, and uh, five times 3,500, you get to just shy of 30,000 pounds return on your 100,000 investment, which is great on 30% uh, uh, over five years on cash. If you use uh, leverage, if you use debt, if you use mortgage, um, you could bought conservatively if you take a 60%, uh, 66% LTV. You could buy three properties for 100,000 each. You take a loan of 67,000 uh, on, on each of them. Uh, you'd get the same rent of 5,000, and uh, <clears throat> but you need to pay the, uh, the mortgage lender. Um, we assumed a 3% uh, interest-only mortgage, um, which is, <coughs> uh, you can probably get, get a bit cheaper. It depends on your circumstances. Um, but that is a, a 2,000 pounds. So you're left after cost with uh, less profit per house than if you had cash, because you have to pay the mortgage uh, of 1,500. The house would increase in value by the same amount. So you'd make 17,908 on, uh, on a single property, but you'd have three of them, which means that uh, for the same 100,000 investment, uh, you'd get 53,000 in, um, in profit uh, out of this out of the same investment. So uh, in thinking about uh, property as an investment, you should, you should make sure you have appropriate leverage. You should always make sure you can afford it. Um, but the impact on your, on your returns are massive, which is why we thought, clearly we are mortgage uh, institutions, so we, we're passionate about this, uh, but this, this shows why, which is why we thought it would be interesting to talk a little bit more about this uh, 3% because it's a big part of, uh, of, of the profit and loss uh, budget that, uh, that you should make. This is magic, <laughs> amazing. You, you keep being quicker than I can be. Um, so <coughs> what's going on with rates? There's a lot of uh, feverish speculation in the, uh, in the papers around what is the Bank of England going to do. Um, there are reasons to be depressed, like GDP is slowing from already a quite slow uh, rate, so this, the economy is not growing that fast. Um, they're always a bit lagged, so we'll find out on Thursday at the same time uh, what, the, uh, what the growth was in the month of December. Um, <coughs> it's okay, small consolation, we're doing better than some other countries, uh, but it's not a lot. And inflation uh, is, um, the Bank of England is trying to keep it at 2%, and has been under that for 10 years now. Um, so, uh, well, five years. Um, so, <clears throat> for these two reasons, you'd say, well, there needs to be a rate cut. Um, <coughs> but then employment is going really well. So, uh, if you look at the employment market, there's, um, there's very low unemployment and a very high employment rate. So, people who are looking for work are uh, getting more of that than before. Um, <coughs> so, all in all, on balance, the traders are thinking there should be a rate cut uh, on Thursday of 25 basis points, a quarter of a, of a percent. However, uh, has there been a boar's bounce? Regardless of what you thought of the election result for many other reasons, um, for buy-to-let investing and property, uh, the market result is fundamentally this was a great thing. So there's a lot of confidence. We are seeing... Uh, I think we're seeing 200% more inquiries than we did a year ago. Now, we're a bit bigger, but that's still a massive uptake. For January, not necessarily being the, uh, a huge month in, uh, in, in mortgage land. And this, this graph here is the uh, purchase manager index. So every month, uh, the Bank of England asks everyone who buys for companies, what do you think? Is the next month going to be better or worse? And uh, the balance of that is an eerily accurate uh, forecast for what's going to happen to the economy later. And you can see after a lot of malaise of what's going to happen, I think the any clarity is better than not. Uh, balance has led to uh, a big jump up. So Bank of England may not do this and actually keep rate uh, as it is. Um, <clears throat> I personally think that's what's going to happen. But 
it kind of also doesn't matter that much because uh, for mortgage rates, a quarter percent up or down doesn't matter uh, that much in the big P&L. Uh, but also the UK is now, particularly in buy to let, is more than 90% fixed rate mortgages. Um, they tend to be funded by another rate called LIBOR. <laughs> So the Bank of England base rate, unless there is a huge surprise in it, isn't, isn't going to move mortgage pricing that much. There's been a longer trend of adjusting the rate to uh, 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 lower growth, but also very low um, bad debt in, in mortgages. So uh, banks, building societies, uh, specialist lenders are getting more and more confident that they can uh, make a profit at these lower levels. These are all mortgages, not just buy to let, but you can see <coughs> that um, in the last three years, um, people, uh, which is the average time that people tend to stay on the fixed rate, so everyone who is up for remortgage tends to be half a percent uh, better off. So that is more than 900 pounds on a typical buy to let mortgage. So remortgaging uh, is a lot cheaper and is worth uh, looking into when you, when you get to it. This won't move that much if base rate goes up or down uh, on Thursday, unless base rate goes up uh, to much higher territory, or we start European experiments like negative uh, base rate. I think most of, what, of the forecasts predict that it's going to move in a quarter up, quarter down band for the next uh, 18 months at least. So um, it is interesting, but not that interesting to look at the Bank of England. But it is very interesting, I think, that if you look at all the rates, that the mortgage market is getting more and more competitive and more compressed in things like higher LTV versus lower LTVs or longer term versus shorter term used to be much more different in price and it's, it's been uh, much more uh, compressed. Um, one of the reasons, uh, <coughs> that, that is one of the reasons why last year we saw quite a big shift in the residential markets, which is uh, now happening in buy to let where... Traditionally, the UK is incredibly uh, dominant as a two-year fixed uh, product. Uh, that could be you know, partly because brokers like to be paid every two years. Um, but there's also some, a product we, we all got used to. In the last year, so uh, last two years, January 18, uh, the, the dark blue line is two years, and this is the percentage of mortgages that are on five years. There's been a big shift uh, from two years to longer term, skipping the three-year product and straight going to, uh, to five years. Part of that is to do that you can, uh, you can typically get a bigger mortgage on five years uh, than you can get on shorter term in affordability. Uh, and the second uh, final trend is, so the third is after mortgage rates are low and they tend to be longer term, is we've seen an increase in company buy-to-let. Company buy-to-let was, so using a limited company to have your buy-to-let portfolio in. Um, was happening at the sort of very large number of properties under the market uh, for years, but it was a bit niche. The tax change that George Osborne made in 2014, saying, well, you can't deduct all of your mortgage interest rates at, at your uh, tax rate applicable over time, are slowly kicking in. There were uh, many years of building that in. I think this year is the, is the last one. And I think last year we sort of saw uh, people really reacting to that and saying, well, know, this doesn't make sense. Now, going for a for remortgage uh, from an individual to, to company is, it depends on the circumstances, but is unlikely to be a great idea because you need to pay stamp duty again, uh, and indeed with a 3% surcharge. But if you're purchasing a new property, a uh, lot of our clients are saying, well, I'll, I'll set it up as a company. So where we saw in the market, 50%, uh, uh, <clears throat> so where we saw in our book, 50% uh, uh, each, each way, company and individual last year, which is a massive change from, I think it was 30% the year before. Um, we're also seeing in intentions, uh, this is a market uh, survey, 62% um, uh, are saying the next time I buy a property, I'll do it in a company, which makes uh, a lot of uh, uh, tech sense for quite a lot of people. So that was the 2019 uh, trends. If we look forward, um, I think 2020, in many respects, will look a lot like 2019 in mortgage rates. Uh, one is base rate may move a bit. We'll all get very excited about this. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm an economist by education. We like to argue about this for months and end. Um, 
but it's not going to matter that much to the uh, uh, to to the rates. Um, if there is an unexpected no deal Brexit at the end of the year, that's a very different story. But uh, the Bank of England uh, itself won't be uh, a big news in 2020 for mortgages. Um, I do see some of those trends I just talked about uh, continuing. Uh, so uh, high loan to value, as they become less dear compared to lower LTV, um, you can see that uh, 75, 80% mortgages in buy to let will become, I, I think, uh, cheaper as they become more popular. There will be a bit of a, of a war for that. Um, so take your advantage of that. And uh, the, the trend towards five year plus, I think, will also uh, continue. So um, debatable how much of it will be on five, but the group of five, seven, and 10 will be bigger than it is in 2019, It's my forecast. And then um, I think there's been, um, um, Kate will give a, give a more comprehensive view on this uh, in a bit, um, but uh, rent increases have been quite limited. I think uh, in 2020, it won't be massive, but I think there is, after the, um, the estate agents uh, letting fees, uh, the, um, <coughs> uh, the, the, the view we see on, on rent, on this, this tax change is being changed, I think there'll be quite a few, is the, if there is a void, quite a few landlords will use this time to, uh, to reset. So I don't see going from one and a half to 4%, but there'll be a bit more scope to increase rent in, uh, in 2020. Uh, which may bring some of the regions, particularly London and, and Southwest, uh, a little bit more in play than they've been um, in 2019, where affordability, high LTV may have been great, but the affordability was hard at 2%, 2.5% uh, yield. So uh, for the individual investment, uh, finding the right property so that the yield and your house price increases makes sense, uh, uh, it, it remains the key. But I think overall it will be a little bit easier in uh, London and Southwest than it was in 2019, where it made a bit more sense to uh, maybe uh, uh, invest slightly outside. 